There's a nice flush right there. A little umbrella poly or I have never seen that. Before. Got our first chantrails of the year. Yeah, so here's a good example of reishi that I had cut. Sweet. So here's that rare chaga on something other than a bird. Without the ghost bite, relatively, there will not be lobsters. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. Unfortunately, it's supposed to be like 100 freaking degrees. One harvest, two harvests, three harvests, and then it grew. Wow, look at all of these wild strawberries. It's rare to find umbrella polypore that's not buggy. That's a good sign to me when you see four right in a row. Awesome. All right. A little racy spot. A little bit back in there. Looks like a good little stump. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen more oysters out here. There's quite a bit of poplar. And there's a nice flush right there. Oh, yeah. All the way up. Wow. That is nuts. That entire tree. See that one fruited early, so that one's not good. See the buggies. And this one, caps have just opened up. That is, how to, uh, you can see the bugs in there. But when it comes to stage, that's just past what I'd consider prime. You see those edges, nice curled edges still. Yeah, so the good ones are really way up high. That is a good little horn. Not bad at all. We got our first chantrails of the year. Just starting. Give those probably another week before the patch is actually going. Awesome.
know, so. First of the year strawberries. That one's not quite ready, but check these out. Look at that. Really getting there. Yeah, so here's a good example of reishi that I had cut. First time was here. You see that line. And then the second time I cut was right here. You see it just kept varnishing and then it started over and varnished out. Same thing up there. One, two, and it's still growing. I've got enough reishi for the year at least in that stage so I'm waiting for it to grow out and I'll harvest the whole thing you see the slugs got to this one right here yep. and that right there's gonna be meaty it's gonna be a big one something like that I'll come back and check it nice yeah I never harvested that Now that is a racy stand. <laughs> nice. Oh. Sweet. Wow, look at that. It's beautiful. It's about as good as it gets. That's a I could use another couple days, but Those are ready to harvest. Sweet. All right, so I'm just tying up my basket, getting ready to move on after harvesting those reishi. And as I'm doing that, of course, you always glance around and make sure you're not standing in the middle of something. And I see. Chanterelles. Yep. Very nice. Those are just itty bitty. They'll get. At least up to my where my hand is on a good year. Very nice. Oh, I gotta take one. Just one. There you go. See the non gill gill looking structure underneath? Those are not real gills. But that's the chanterelle. That's the catharellus. Right there. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go see if we can find some bigger ones. Oh, all right, y'all. So here's that rare chaga on something other than a birch. Look at that. That is awesome. I've only seen three of these, not on a birch. You see it up there, right there. Yeah. That is Chaga. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna mark this spot so I can come back and look at this grow. As far as I'm concerned, the medicinal value comes from the birch. I do not believe it comes from any random tree. But yeah, there you are. Chaga. I think that's hornbeam. I really am not sure. Not the greatest with trees, except for the ones that my mushrooms grow on. But there you are. Sweet. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. Definitely a rarity. Also, definitely chaga. Pretty cool. Yeah, there's one right up there. Same thing. Awesome. Let's go get them shrooms. 
Oh, that is the first bowl eat of the year. Not an edible bowl eat, but it's still the first bowl eat all the same. <laughs> all right, so I'm guessing 2024 is going to be a good bowl eat year, which means good king year. Hopefully. So because this year has had quite a bit less bugs and slugs than last year or years past, which I, doesn't make sense, last year was so wet, there were so many slugs, maybe they just burnt out, I don't know. It's a wave, I guess. But I'm leaving these a little bit more than I usually do. That's, that got rained on, got beat up. But I'm gonna take that one, that one, that one and that one. I'm gonna let everything else grow. But this year you can let them grow probably a lot more than the years past. Cause there's just not the amount of slugs and bugs, at least here around Augusta, that I've seen in years past. You see that's where I harvested before. Right there. Same thing. See those things still turned out really nice. And this tree's about done on its energy. So I'm happy to get that much. Got a good little basket there. Still left a bunch to fruit. Awesome. All right. So this is an early sighting, being by about a month. These are usually up beginning of July, middle of July, and we're looking right in the middle of June. So that's that. Monotropa. It's closely related to the Indian pipe or the ghost pipe or the many other pipe references. It just has one of those at the top and that has many of them. The Uniflora is the ghost pipe. Yeah. Associated with the Lactarius. A lobster host species is a lactarius, so without the ghost pipe, relatively, there will not be lobsters. And those are kind of easy to see. Again, the ghost pipes are a different color, but they stick up. So you see them off in the distance. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, look at all down in there. So this is the one that I harvested a couple weeks ago. I don't know, maybe 10 days ago. You see that line right there? But yeah, does that look like <laughs> it lost much power? Wow. Yeah, it didn't lose. <laughs> you can see those the lines right there. I could feel it. I can't even see it, but I can feel it. Yeah, right there. So yeah, about, I don't know, I'm guessing about 10% on a good fruit and tree. It's definitely a lot more you lose. The tree doesn't have enough energy. So it does need to recover from injury, but wow. Size of that. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not gonna touch that. Let that baby grow. Trick is if you want a nice pretty one. Again, I think there's a little buggy. are beautiful no bugs apparently ain't even slug marks on them I was not expecting this wow awesome 
another or one of my early spots starting to go. This is a very conifer forest right in here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Well, that looks okay. All right. All right. All right. Unfortunately, it's supposed to be like 100 freaking degrees up here. And I'm pretty sure everybody on the East Coast, or at least in the Northeast, is getting it. Wow. So, man. Nope, that's too bad. That's, it's probably going to hurt that. I might want to come out and water them. The good news is, is this area has grown in a bunch. It has been out in the open forever. I had to snatch three. I want to taste some shanties this evening. It's been a long off season. Need some inspiration. As you see, they're really, really young. And trails are definitely trying to do their thing. Most definitely. The problem is it's just gonna be so hot. And these are right out on a trail. It's open, basically open sky. Oh wow. Hmm. Alright, so I'll grab. Sorry, been knotted on just a bit from the buggies and stuff. Something nibbled on. Be an animal. Yeah. Snacks. Alright, so here we go a couple days later and the chanterelles just dried up. That's the problem. When they pop out, they need it to be optimal growing temperature. That is all you'll get. And it's going to be in the 90s the next couple days. Feel like 100 and something. And then we're going to have rain. So after that, if you're in the northeast, there should be a great reset right into summer mushrooms. So, boletes, lobsters, chanterelles, chicken of the woods. Those things are going to go pretty well. I have a really good feeling. I cannot wait for the Kings this year. But yeah, it's, I'm out just kind of scoping, hopefully to see a wet chanterelle spot. Yep, so there's some chanterelles right there. Seems like they're only out in the trail. And they're dry. You can see it drying up. So these next couple days in the 90s are really going to do some damage to these. Because today's like 80% humidity, 70% humidity. So they should still be growing. They should already are just drying up. Next two days should be bad. Alright, so this looks a little bit better. Just because we're here by water. Yeah, sound in there. That looks a little sunburnt, but <laughs> all right, y'all. Still growing. Still growing. And that's really nice. One harvest, two harvests, three harvests, and then it grew. So there's your sign that you can see very clearly a reharvesting and growth. Same thing there. It's one, two. So there's actually C3, two on that one. So I'll just take that one, that one, and that one. 
and let those grow. So with it being so hot, decided to try to forge that bank over there and on this side see if I could see anything because it's probably going to be the only place that's cool enough and moist enough to fruit some stuff. Everywhere I'm seeing is really, really dry. see a whole lot it's starting now hopefully after the rain in a few days we'll get some stuff going so I'm looking for a boom this couple chanterelles here and there it's good it keeps my palate happy but beyond that it doesn't do a whole lot so Wow, look at all of these wild strawberries. I have never seen them this big. Wow, never. Wow. Mm. Oh my goodness. I have never seen a pot. Wow, a patch of wild strawberries like that. Oh. Alright, well, it's a day after some rain and three days of 90 to 100. I'm coming to check my chanterelle spots. These are the early ones that usually let me know how the season's going to go. <laughs> right on time. Actually, these are early, but this one spot. What is happening? Oh, very nice. Very nice. Well, we might find some shanties today. Again, it's been 95, three days-ish. Last night was, we had a good amount of rain. So anything that was out probably had a good growth session. That one's falling over. You see, nice chanterelle. Last year we didn't have a lot of the golden chanterelles. There are more the tubiformis and the color, the frail chanterelles. Oh, that's beautiful. Awesome. Nice. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Shoot some more. Alrighty, they're definitely hiding a little bit there. Sweet. Awesome. <laughs> See these golden chanterelles, they weigh a lot more than those. Aigna color, tubiformis. So you don't need as much to get a pound. A lot less squats. So hopefully this year will be more poundage, less squattage. Fingers crossed. Still got more here growing. Nice. Let them babies grow. Oh, wow, that is one tiny little umbrella polypore. I have never seen one that tiny. Oh, buddy. Yeah, and it's only a couple hundred feet from where I found the two last year. Oh, that is beautiful. Shining in the light. You can see it's tiny. Oh, wow. Just next level. The bugs are crazy around here. Look at that. Sweet. Oh, oh buddy. Oh, that 
that is going to be yummy. It's tiny. And the trick of it is when you trim up the bottom, make sure there's no holes. Because you can chase the bugs up from the bottom. And there might not be any buggies, but it's rare to find umbrella polypore that's not buggy. Because they get in it really fast. So it's cool to find one that has zero bugs. Wish it was bigger, but we get what we can. Go pins out in the woods, that's good. And then I see some right here. Nice. Oh yeah. The flesh is starting to go. There you go. One for my homies. Awesome. Get some chance today. Nothing crazy, but. That's a good sign to me when you see four right in a row. A bad year, there's a shant. There'll be one. Good year, there'll be three or four. Always in together. So that's awesome. Now, about 100 feet down in elevation, I'm finding them down by this creek. Awesome. Chanterelles, yeah, it should be a good shanty season. Just gonna snatch these two. Nice. Awesome. So almost all my spots in this one area are fruiting. Nice. Now everybody has an issue with over harvesting. My thing is, is if you're only taking the choicest ones, the ones that are ready to go, you're going to miss some, both sides. So don't worry about over harvesting on most things. Now, some shelf mushroom, something on a on a tree, you might get a lot. You might end up harvesting it and taking all of the sporability out of it, but that would just be if you harvested it really early. Awesome, I actually see another one right there. Nice. Well, that one's been not on just a little bit, but <laughs> blow it off. Awesome. Now the seed is definitely starting. Awesome. Very nice. Oh yeah. back in there. There's actually a couple starting in there. Awesome. Alright. So it's not a massive haul. But every time I go out now, I'm doubling up on my chanterelle weight. So that's cool. Extrapolate it out a couple weeks and hopefully we can get ourselves some poundage every time. 